Set in different timelines, the film depicts the existence of the Paro, known as the aliens that can enter and exit human bodies without their knowledge. The aliens are imprisoned inside the human body and can only come out for five minutes because they cannot breathe in the Earth's atmosphere. In the year 1380, masked warriors are in pursuit of an alien who has come out of its host woman. Suddenly, the sky opens and reveals a portal with a four-wheeled vehicle springing out from it. A humanoid identified as Guard emerges from the vehicle along with his hovering robot companion. For a long time, the two have been responsible for keeping watch of the alien prisoners from their planet. Their job on Earth is to track, extract, and restrain the aliens who try to escape and hurt innocent humans. They quickly scan the area for the alien, which is returned to its host human woman. Being controlled, the woman is about to attack Guard, but he succeeds at extracting the alien prisoner out from her. During the woman's last moments, she pleads with Guard to save her baby. In reply, Guard tells her that they cannot interfere with human affairs. His robot companion, however, takes form as a human and protects the baby just when a masked warrior is about to shoot her. Afterwards, the both of them return to their timeline using the same portal. While Guard is containing the escaped Paro inside their base, he hears a cry from a distance. He comes outside and finds that the baby is in their car, after the robot companion decides to bring the baby with them. The hovering robot tries to persuade him into keeping the baby, proposing to experiment on it, wherein they can learn more about humans. Meanwhile, the two receive information that their next prisoner convoy will arrive in 10 years and 8 months, making them adopt the baby in order to blend with the people. In the year 2022, 10 years have passed since Guard and his robot companion have adopted the baby, which they named Yian. Through the years, Yian gave the nickname Thunder to the hovering robot, while Guard took a human form and became her acting father. One day, Guard is summoned to Yian's school by the principal, who informs Guard that Yian recently went to a police station to report Guard, claiming that he has kidnapped her and has been messing with her memories. The principal later shows Guard a footage from the police station wherein Yian openly reveals that her father is a robot. After the meeting, Guard instructs Thunder to delete the video from the police station. While waiting to pick up Yian, Thunder warns Guard about a woman nearby who has been watching him. The woman is later identified as Min Heen, the aunt of Yian's friend who appears to be interested in Guard. Gian approaches him to talk, but Guard ignores her. When Guard drives Yian back to the base, Yian talks to Thunder, who has taken the form of their car. Guard tries to deny the truth from Yian, saying that cars don't talk. But Yian claims to remember her memories vividly and dismisses Guard's comments. She sneaks a small foam in the car seat before leaving, and eavesdrops that Guard and Thunder are off to imprison another set of high-ranking peros and needs human bodies. In search of more answers, Yian sneaks into their car at night. Thunder stops Yian from fiddling with the car and chooses to just tell her the truth instead, disclosing he is a program that processes data and can vary in physical form. Continuously insisting for more information, Yian also learns that she came from 646 years in the past. But before their conversation finishes, Thunder ends up oversharing as he casually reveals that they will be looking for human hosts at Jisun Hospital. The next day, Yian heads to the hospital and records a video of the arrival of the alien prisoners. From the windows, the people watch as thick clouds accumulate in the sky. A spaceship emerges from the clouds and the alien prisoners are implanted on 107 human subjects. The people in the hospital attempt to escape, but to no avail. Yan is able to run away in time as the last alien prisoner has been implanted. After the procedure, the 107 human subjects continue with their activities and have no memory of what happened. Instead of coming home, Yan comes to see her friend Minson, showing her the recorded video of the aliens in the hospital. Later, Thunder takes the form of Guard to pick up Lion and Minson's residence. Back at their base, Guard and Thunder decide to tell Yan about the alien prisoners, which are each intentionally trapped inside a human body because the human mind is the most impenetrable place there is. Every time an alien is imprisoned, the humans have no memory of it and the aliens are stuck in them until their death. Yan complains that it is wrong for the humans to be treated as such without their permission. But Guard replies that he has no concern for the human beings. She then questions their intentions for raising her, but Guard walks away and ignores Yan. That night, Yan is unable to sleep in her room. She heads out and sleeps in their car with Thunder. Meanwhile, Moon Dosok, a police detective who became one of the human subjects in Jihan Hospital, lingers alone in a park during his duty. He carefully studies his surroundings, noticing that his senses have grown oddly stronger. Dosiak manages to catch the culprit, who turns out to be working with one of his colleagues inside the police station. He intercepts an exchange between the culprit and his colleague by mindlessly murdering both of them using an axe. 
A new day begins, Thunder receives an urgent message from their planet saying that escaped armed prisoners are headed towards Earth in a spaceship. They are urged to quickly recover Dosidak, who the escaped alien prisoners are after. Guard rides their vehicle, telling Yayan to get out but she refuses. Out of urgency, Guard allows Yan to come with as Thunder transforms into a small spaceship carrying them. Inside, Guard goes back to his robot form while maneuvering the spaceship towards the escaped prisoners. Meanwhile, inside his apartment, Dosiak wakes up without remembering much details from the previous night. He panics as the police call him, causing him to abruptly leave his apartment. Just then, the police officers and the two spaceships have all arrived at this building. Guard tells the police to stay out of the building, confiscating all their weapons. The weapons are stored inside their car, which Yian later keeps in her bag. Inside the building, a high-ranking red alien approaches Dosiak from the other side of the hallway. Frightened, Dosiak runs away from the red alien using the elevator, but the alien breaches it. The red alien informs Dosiak that the controller, the leader of the aliens who are against human imprisonment, is trapped inside his human body. And the controller must be awakened and free from his body using the energy knife, which has long been in guard's possession, functioning as their power source on Earth which allows them to travel through time and space. As if on cue, Guard makes his way in the elevator and interrupts the Red Alien. A battle ensues between the two forces, while Dosiok narrowly escapes the building using one of the police cars. The Red Alien later steals the energy knife from Guard, who is overpowered during the battle. After the Red Alien defeats Guard, their spaceship leaves to chase after Dosiok, who drives the police car into a parking lot to hide. However, the Red Alien's spaceship forcefully enters inside, causing the entire parking lot to be destroyed. In the meantime, Guard persistently chases them up, along with Thunder and Yan. Without the energy knife, Guard uses his reserve energy to fire against the enemy spaceship, but leaves no damage to it. Thunder analyzes the weak point of the spaceship, learning that they can only cause damage by hitting its bright red core. Unfortunately, Guard and Thunder's attacks cannot penetrate the ship, and Guard's energy depletes to a critical level, requiring Thunder to return to his form as a small hovering robot and perform emergency recharge on him. To make matters worse, the Red Alien successfully stabs Dosiok with the energy knife, which awakens the controller inside his body, which is soon freed from Dostok's body as it makes its way on the spaceship. Guard then instructs Thunder to secretly follow the controller inside their spaceship and give real-time updates to him. To their surprise, the alien spaceship carries massive amounts of Hava, orange spheres that contain their planet's atmosphere. The controller aims on spreading the Hava all over the Earth in order to make the atmosphere breathable for the Peros. In turn, they will no longer need human bodies to inhabit the Earth. Upon hearing this, Guard rushes into the spaceship to stop the controller. He takes the energy knife from the controller and disrupts the deployment of the Hava. While fighting, two spheres of Hava go loose from the spaceship. The controller then escapes from the spaceship and returns to Dostok's body before detonating the two Hava spheres, which quickly spreads all over the streets of Seoul. Outside, Yayan has got out of the car when she catches sight of the sphere. Seeing the smoke instantly kills the human beings nearby, she immediately runs away from it. Thunder saves her from being poisoned by bringing her inside their car. Later, Thunder, Guard, and Yayan reunite in their base. Guard explains to Yayan that he will be taking care of the spaceship and might not come back because of how dangerous their situation is. Thus, he tells her the whole truth, revealing that he was the one who killed her mother and they only raised her so they could live among humans without being suspected. Guard orders Thunder to bring Yayan to Minson's house, keeping her away from the impending battle. But Yayan convinces Thunder to turn back and help Guard instead. Inside the area overrun by Hava, the controller regroups with two more alien prisoners. The three seizes an ambulance to take back their spaceship and drives towards the base. When they arrive, Guard fights them inside the spaceship using his remaining energy. Thunder informs Guard that he and Yayan are returning to the base and they coordinate an attack to hit the spaceship's core. Yet, even with the coordinated efforts of Guard, Thunder, and Yayan, they are unable to stop the Collector and the alien prisoners. To prevent the aliens from activating the Hava in their spaceship, Guard decides to switch times. Using the energy knife, Thunder opens up the portal towards the year 1381 and they crash land on a cliff along with the three aliens. In the year 1381, four human beings are on top of a hill when all of a sudden, they witness a portal appear in the sky. The four humans, a magistrate, the two mages from Mount Sangak named Huxul and Xiangbun, and an old man called Dogjard, the magistrate is alarmed and he tells their young servant boy to stay on his spot while they check the crash. Meanwhile on the cliff, the time leap has drained the energy of thunder. 
he is unable to generate enough energy to leave the three aliens in this year, causing all of them to get trapped. Shortly, the battle between Guard and the Collector continues. Guard ends up losing his arm and he eventually dies while trying to protect Yin from the Collector. Enraged, Yan uses the pistol in her bag to repeatedly shoot Dosak's body, weakening the Collector's human host. Thunder uses his remaining energy to keep Yian inside their car before tossing her away from the Collector and towards the ocean, leaving a final message to Yian while he transforms into an inactive spaceship under the sea, telling her that she must find him again. On the hilltop, the young servant boy does not follow the magistrate's orders as he decides to locate the crash. He wanders around the forest and reaches the shore, where he finds Yian unconscious. When Yian wakes up, the servant boy curiously asks Yian about her strange-looking modern clothes. Yian ignores his question and frantically looks for thunder and the energy knife. The boy swims to the sea, trying to find her the said knife, but he is only able to retrieve Yian's backpack. He introduces himself as Muruk, as they set camp in the forest during the night. When the two hear a noise nearby, Muruk volunteers to check it out. He walks around the forest, only to be found by the controller, who has been looking for another human body. The controller implants itself in Muruk's body, and the young boy lives on without any memory of it. Ten years later, it is then 1391. Muruk, who has grown to be a clumsy bounty hunter and magic learner, is talking to his fellow Taoist followers when a bunch of thieves arrive nearby. Together with his shape-shifting cat companions that live in an enchanted fan named Left Paw and Right Paw, they easily capture the thieves. The three later bring the thieves to the authorities, where they find a new bounty searching for a strange knight for a high price. Muruk decides to take on the bounty and talk to Dogturd, who happens to know about the knife. He visits Dogturd in prison and later frees him, who reveals that the knife was first found in Mount Huayniang. In this timeline, the energy knife is called the Divine Knife, known as an artifact with indestructible powers. The magistrate, who is retired and now runs a place called Byakninjun, bought the knife and kept it in his possession. The next day, Muruk together with left paw and right paw visit the former magistrate, who finally reveals himself after Muruk attempts to disrupt the area. Just then, a man in a modern suit stabs the magistrate before running away, who turns out to be one of the alien prisoners also looking for the energy knife. At the same time, Doctrid enters Byakninjung and has stolen the knife during the chaos. Muruk chases after the alien, but it overpowers him with its punches, which are strong enough to break the wall behind Muruk, causing him to pass out. The alien then leaves him to get the sword from Doctored. After a while, left paw and right paw find Muruk and wake him up. The two stare at Muruk in confusion for his heavy injuries, which he has apparently never experienced before. Behind Muruk, they find a hole in the wall and discover a riverbank where an active spaceship that glows in red is located. Muruk also finds a veiled woman standing near the ship. He tries to greet her, but she quickly runs away. Meanwhile, Hyuksol and Chiangwu and the two mages from Mount Samgak show up in Byakninjung to investigate the place where the ex-magistrate was stabbed. They suspect that a tentacle was used during the murder, which brings them to consult Jiejing, a masked monk guru in the Nilbin Temple. They offer him trinkets, but Jiejing has no interest in them. When Huxol mentions the Divine Knife, the masked monk guru cooperates with the two mages and immediately offers assistance in finding it. At the same time, Muruk and his cat companions investigate the man in the modern suit and find his house. Inside the house, they discover that the man is also looking for the knife from the same bounty, stamped by the Milbin Temple. On the wall, they find a drawing of thunder, along with aliens and spaceships. Later, Muruk follows the tracks of Doctored, leading him to a wedding, where he disguises as the groom throughout the ceremony and ends up marrying a young woman named Lee On. During the ceremony, left paw and right paw spot Doctored bringing the knife as a gift for the wedding. After the wedding, Muruk notices that Lee On has been carrying a gun in a watch with her, which confuses him. Lee On is later revealed as Yin, who has grown up in the timeline. Unbeknownst to him, Li An has secretly put a sleeping potion in his drink. Moreover, she intercepted the wedding and also disguised herself as the bride in search of the energy knife. When Muruk goes out to look for the knife in the gift storehouse, he becomes drowsy and wobbles while walking. Shortly after, Li An also enters the storehouse, looking for the knife. Just then, the two mages arrive in the area with Jie Zhang. Hyuksul and Chiang Wun hypnotize the storehouse keeper and successfully acquire the divine knife. When Muruk retreats to their previous room, he realizes that Li An is not the real bride just before he passes out. Later, Li An initiates an attack to intercept the two mages. While trying to get the knife back from Li An, the two mages end up getting themselves cut by its blade. 
ultimately, she defeats the two mages using her pistol and immediately escapes with the energy knife. However, Jay Jang knocks her unconscious and imprisons her in the Milbin Temple. Next morning, Li An wakes up and finds that Jay Jing has held her captive. Jay Jing recognizes her identity as Yin and reveals himself as one of the alien prisoners who passed through the portal with them. Yayan responds, saying that she will keep trying to get the energy knife. Gaging leaves her and meets with the man in the modern suit inside Milbin Temple. To be able to teleport out of their trapped timeline, the two alien prisoners need to find the energy knife, their spaceship, and the controller. They are currently in search of the controller's human host, suspecting that the host is most probably one of the four humans who saw them during their arrival in 1381. But the former magistrate just died when he was stabbed with the energy knife. The two mages of Sangak were both cut by the knife, but the controller was not awakened from them either. The two alien prisoners then continue to pursue Dogjard, their last suspected human host of the controller. After talking about their plan of action, Jaijing receives an update that the ship has surfaced near Byakninjung. Thinking that Yan and the two mages are no longer useful to their plans, he then instructs his guards to feed Yan and the two mages with poisoned food. Back to Muruk, left paw and right paw find the pistol that Yan left. When Muruk wakes up, the three of them continue their plot on getting the knife. They enter the Milbin Temple, pretending to be temple guards. Having no knowledge about the poison, Muruk serves the poisoned food to Yian's cell. The two recognize each other from before, and Yian casually eats the food while talking to Muruk, who insists that he and Yian already met each other before the wedding, yet he cannot remember it clearly. Yian thinks otherwise as she continues to shrug him off. Muruk is determined to straighten his memories by getting to know more about Yian. He takes out Yian's pistol that he previously retrieved, using it against her in exchange for information. In reply, Yian tells him that she came from over 600 years in the future, but Muruk does not believe her. Nonetheless, Muruk gives her pistol back before returning to the palace, but soon as she retrieves her pistol, the poison kicks in her body and she passes out. That evening, the two mages eat their food and manage to detect the poison at first bite, which lessens the impact of the poison in their body. However, their bodies are petrified just before they could take the antidote. At that moment, Muruk appears from the ceiling trying to steal the energy knife. The two mages find him behind them and ask for his help in reaching the antidote. Realizing that they ate the same poisoned food as Yin, he gets some of the antidote from the mages and rushes towards her cell. There, Muruk finds Yian dying and immediately feeds her the antidote. Just then, the two alien prisoners surround Muruk. While Muruk tries to fight back, Jaijing quickly stabs him in the chest using his tentacle. Muruk and Yian both lie unconscious side by side, as Yian is placed in a coffin while Muruk's body is dumped in the ocean. Fortunately, Yian recovers through the antidote and successfully subdues the palace guards who are burying her, then continues to try retrieving the energy sword from the two aliens. A battle then ensues. Muruk, who has the controller locked in his body, is able to survive with the help of its power inside him. He comes back and joins the battle on Yian's side. After being poisoned and betrayed by Jie Jing, the two mages also work together with Muruk and Yian to defeat the aliens using their trinkets. In the fight, Muruk summons the magistrate's sword from his fan, with which he then triumphantly kills one of the aliens by ejecting it from his human host for more than five minutes. Yet, the alien murmurs to Muruk before it dies, saying that there's something inside him. Hearing that, Muruk suddenly recalls being taken host by the controller back when he was the young servant boy. Unable to accept the fact that an alien lurks inside his own body, Muruk faints. Meanwhile, after successfully retrieving the energy knife, Yan immediately escapes to the riverbank to bring the knife to thunder. However, the remaining alien pursues closely, and the movie ends with a cliffhanger.